see the, the demo of Oxygen version 2, you can come uh, here. Uh, this is a very short demo. I, I just want to uh, show uh, some features we are currently implementing uh, for Oxygen version 2. Oxygen version 2 will be released in a few months. So I hope to release something, some pre version, some 1.99 version in uh, maybe two or three months. Um, so as you may know, uh, the current version of Oxygen is great for programming uh, the server part of a web application and also for the client part of uh, a camel, uh, web application in OCaml. But uh, Oxygen version 2 will be about making only one application, only one camel application with some parts on server side, on other parts in, in the browser. Um, just two slides before to uh, this one is an overview of the Oxygen project. Actually, when I'm speaking about Oxygen version two, I would rather speak about Helium version two uh, because we have several sub projects. Uh, uh, first, Oxygen server is a web server. Helium is our framework for programming web application in uh, OCaml. LWT, you have heard of, uh, you heard about it. Uh, our browser is a Camel virtual machine written in JavaScript, so that you can use uh, your Camel program compiled with a regular uh, Camel compiler inside the browser. Oclosure is a very new project. Uh, it's a binding for the Google Closure library which is a, a library for uh, in JavaScript for um, uh, user interfaces. Oxymore is a content management system. Actually, it's a set of tools to build wikis uh, and to user management uh, and rights management, etc. Oxforge is a project to build a forge uh, for software, software project hosting. And Macac is a project for uh, database library with the compression syntax. So, in the rest of my talk, I will speak about Helium version 2. Uh, here is a quick summary of Helium features. First of all, Helium is using services as first class values, as uh, functional programming is using function as first class values. In Helium, you can define your own services and manipulate the same uh, as values. Another feature is that we are typing links on form. That means that uh, if you have a link with parameters inside, uh, you, we will check the types of parameters in, the, in links. We have static typing of HTML. We have uh, the ability to create dynamically new services. That's what we call uh, continuation based continuation based web programming you have uh, maybe the m most interesting feature in helium we are very sophisticated service identification me mechanism which means that you have several kinds of services and you can decide precisely the kind of service you want uh, with respect to the behavior you want uh, and uh, you are using the same language between server and client side, etc., etc. First demo, uh, demo of our browser. Maybe you have already seen it. I just show you one example. This example. Uh, this is a, a boulder lash written in OCaml that you can run in your browser. For example, this one. You can try it on the website, it's working. Okay. Right, uh, uh, it's not really easy without a mouse. Okay. <laughs> another example, I have another one. Uh, this one is a minesweeper. Ah, 
No. <laughs> um, okay, O Brother has, was written by uh, Benjamin Canou, and you can use it even without uh, the web server, even without uh, the rest of the Oxygen project. So the code here is plain on code. Yes, it's plain on code. So what's the size of the runtime system? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin. My second demo is O Closure. It is, it's a project that is current, currently uh, uh, written by, my, by some of my students. Uh, their names. Some of them are here. And I show you only one example of this. Uh, so this is a JavaScript library. It's uh, everything uh, like uh, menus and windows and dialog box, etc. You can s implement something like that. Or this. Uh, okay. This is uh, this is a binding. So you you write this uh, in OCaml. You have uh, um, well a uh, hierarchy of classes. Uh, that correspond to, to Google Closure classes. Obviously, you have LWT in a browser. We implemented uh, LWT O browser module, which is the counterpart of LWT Unix. This is a, a small example. Uh, as you see, the graphics module is implemented in a browser. Uh, this is a function that sleeps for uh, 10 milliseconds that then it uh, drew a white circle and then a black circle. I launched two LWT threads and you will see. In my browser. It's very short code for writing this. <laughs> uh, this is an example of uh, a simple Helium service. This is how you define a service in Helium. I call this function register new service. This is the URL. And uh, here my service is taking one parameter that is called name in on a task type a string. This is my web page with HTML, head, body, etc. And it says hello and the name. And you see here in the URL, the parameter is here. And is uh, the, the type of the parameter is checked by the server automatically. Now for the new features of uh, Helium version 2, we have the ability to mix client-side and server-side code inside the same program. Actually, I'm not sure this will be the, the, the syntax at the end. Uh, maybe the syntax will change, but basically it's something like that. You have here a paragraph, and you say, if I click on this paragraph, I will open a window which calls this uh, JavaScript function with uh, written click it. I don't remember what it is. Clickable paragraph. Clicked. Okay. Uh, 
Now, more complicated, you can use Helium inside your client-side code. So I can call, for example, this exit to function that will stop the current program, uh, client-side program, and go to another service. Well, I like this uh, strange notation backslash here. Uh, every time I want to use a server-side variable uh, in client-side code, I need to say, I'm not sure it will stay like that, but uh, I need to say what I want to do with it is here I want to do a copy of this uh, camel value, one service, this server side client value, to use it on client uh, side. I click here and then I go to another page. But what is interesting now is to uh, keep the same program, uh, to be able to uh, go to another page, but without stopping the current side, uh, the current client side program. For example, if you are uh, implementing, uh, well, I don't know, a website like uh, Deezer.com or MusicMe.com, where you can listen to music, you don't want to stop the music every time you uh, change the page. You, you continue. Uh, your, uh, your visit on the website, and then you can uh, go to another page during uh, the music, listening to the music, and you want to be able to bookmark your page to turn back later on that page. This is now possible with uh, this. Uh, well, I, actually, you don't know, <laughs> you don't see that the program is not stopped, but uh, here is, I have the same uh, client side program, but another. Uh, another page, and you can bookmark that page and turn back on that page later, which is not so obvious to do. This is a, this is a photo of Okamel in the clothes. <laughs> Sorry. So you have replaced the main, let's say, frame, and uh, replaced the main body of the page with a new stuff? Yes. Without yeah, stopping I, the record? Yes, exactly. And we have some mechanism here in the, in the URL. Because actually, it's not possible to, to change that part of the URL for security reasons. So we are writing the new part of the URL after that, uh, in the, the fragment part of the URL. It's in this example, I'm defining. Uh, a node, uh, some items in my page, and then I'm creating a div with one paragraph on this container with three uh, items, and the item function is defined by LHI PC data, and here I write the camel version. This is uh, this is the part of uh, that part of the page. You see three items I'm using: camel three dot eleven dot two. But now, if I click on the paragraph, I will happen a new node, a new item to the container. But now it's executed on client side with a browser. If I click here, I'm adding a new version, a new uh, item. But you see that uh, it has been added by a browser and not by uh, not on server side. Now I can do a remote function call. Here I'm defining on server side a function. This let server uh, notation means that it is code that is only on server side. This may change in the future. It's just. A function that takes a list and returns uh, one uh, than the list. On client side, I do this remote function call and I can send a camel uh, list and I, what, I append the result in the, uh, in the body of my document.
Okay. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, last example, uh, well, I, maybe I can show you the example, maybe we will look at the code later. Um, usually when you are programming a web application, you are using obviously the HTTP protocol. With the HTTP pro protocol, you uh, uh, client-side program can, can do a remote procedure call. But it's more difficult when the server want to uh, say something to the client because it's not possible to uh, for a server to send something to the client. So we have something now to do this. Uh, imagine you want to program uh, Gmail or Facebook or something like that, when uh, and you want your user to be advice each time he receives an email you can do this here I'm click here to start to start listening on the channel and then uh, here I, I received a message I can say okay and maybe later I will receive another one okay etc etc How do I implement this? First, I'm creating on server side a channel and I'm doing a, a LWT thread that will write on this channel every uh, four and something seconds. So I'm sleeping four seconds and uh, I'm writing on the channel and I, I'm looping. On client side, on client side, I write this that page, and when I click on that div, I'm doing start listening on that channel. And when something uh, when something comes on that channel, I will launch the alert function. And this this one will call the stop listening function. The last example is the same, but uh, in this one, here I have three uh, browsers. I click on start on each one. When I push on, uh, when I click on one of these links, for example, here I push on A, then the server will send B to every uh, client that is connected to the application. Then if I click on push zero, the server will send one to every uh, application. Okay. Okay. On the third one, uh, we'll uh, send randomly generated uh, content, but after a delay. So it is waiting a few seconds and sending the value to uh, every client. Oops. And this example is using React because we are planning to use reactive programming for, uh, for this. Uh, here I'm creating on server side an event, a React event, and I'm binding that function to the event. When somebody, some client send A, I will send B, when some client send zero, I will send one. And when some client send something else, I will sleep for five seconds and then send the, the message. On client side, uh, well, it's really simple. You, when some, somebody clicks here, I will send A, send zero. So I have uh, the client side, client side counterpart of my event here with that syntax with backslash event backslash e means that I'm creating the client side counterpart of the server side event. Okay, uh, that's all for the demo. Just one announcement: we are looking for uh, for one engineer or maybe several several one. 
Uh, okay, so if you're if you're interested, you can uh, write me an email. And here is a list of people who uh, participated in the development of uh, Oxygen. Maybe I, well, I can uh, quote them all. I hope I uh, did not forget uh, anybody. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.